wet water that's actually placed on the surface of the body and as we've mentioned cutaneous loss of water. So when we talk about loss of heat by conduction we mean the direct contact, yes, but we also mean the heat lost during the process of evaporation. So we've looked at conduction, we're now going to look at convection. Now we've already decided that when a molecule is hotter, it's going to be vibrating more vigorously. This is true of air molecules. When the air is hotter, the individual air molecules will be vibrating more vigorously. Now if I'm standing nice and still, people come and stand next to me, and you could get a lot of us in a small space. Lots of people could all fit in this room, and as long as we stand still. But if I start moving around and vibrating like this, in various directions, then can you see if there was someone next to me, I'd bump into them and I'd push them out of the way. And it's exactly the same with air molecules. When the molecules are vibrating more vigorously, they're going to take up more space. Therefore, there will be less air molecules in a particular volume. Therefore, the density of the air will be less. So, as the air warms up, the molecules vibrate more vig vigorously. Because the molecules are vibrating more vigorously, they're taking up more space, and the air is less dense. This is the principle of a hot air balloon. You heat up some air with the burner, the hot air becomes less dense and rises. And because it is less dense than the cold air surrounding the envelope of the balloon, the balloon will rise. Because warm air is less dense than cold air. And it's exactly the same when you think about heat loss from the body. So the body is going to warm up the air round about it, providing of course that the air is cooler than the body, which is very often the case, unless you're in a hot tropical climate. So air round about the body is warmed up. As this air is warmed up, the molecules are going to vibrate more vigorously, therefore the air is going to become less dense. Because the air is less dense, the hot air will float upwards. Away from the body. So the body warms up the air, the air becomes less dense and floats upwards. Now if this air is floating upwards, can you see that as the air moves upwards it's going to leave a partial vacuum round about the body? Now of course that can't be tolerated, so immediately colder air will be drawn in from underneath. So colder air molecules will come in from underneath. These in turn, of course, will be warmed by the body and will then rise. So the body warms up air next to it, which moves away upwards because it's less dense. This is replaced by denser cold air from underneath. What this means is that you have a flow of heat, a flow of air over the body, and the heat which rises is referred to as the transfer of heat by convection. So convection is the movement of heat within the currents, uh, the movement of heat in currents within a fluid. You get convection in water, you get it in air as well, of course. Now I think I'll mention wind chill at this stage as well. If you're in cold air, and the air is still, then the air round about the surface of the body is going to warm up 
and we've already said the air acts as a reasonably good insulator of heat. But if you're in a wind and some air molecules are warmed up, then very quickly those warm mo molecules of air will be blown away and replaced by colder ones in the wind. So wind chill is going to cool the body down because as soon as the body has warmed some air molecules up, they're going to be blown away and replaced by colder ones. That's going to increase the temperature differential between the warm body and the cold air and that will cause an accelerated rate of heat conduction from the body into the cold air molecules. Again, they're quickly blown away to be replaced by cold ones again. So, in cold air especially, when there's a wind, you're going to get a forced convection. So a wind chill really is a process of forced convection, blowing warm molecules of air away from the surface of the body. So remember, convection is the movement of currents and flows as a result of warm fluids, in this case air, warm air, being less dense than cold air. So we've just discussed conduction and convection. The third mechanism of heat transfer, and this is the last one, is radiation. Now, heat radiation is part of the electromagnetic spectrum, and it's actually a longer form of radiation than visible light. And when people have no clothes on in a cold environment, actually most of the heat that they lose from the body is actually lost from radiation. Because all hot bodies, as in the sense of objects, all hot objects radiate heat. So the sun is a hot object and it radiates heat away from it. And remember, heat goes from hot areas to cold areas. So if we're in a cold environment and the body is hotter than the environment, then radiation is going to carry heat from the body out into the environment. There's going to be a net loss of radiative heat from the body. So if we're in a cold environment, then heat is going to be lost by radiation from the body. It's actually infrared radiation carrying heat away from the body at the speed of light. So in a cold environment, heat will be lost from the body by radiation into the environment. Now, in a hot environment, when there is hot objects in the environment, or indeed in a very sunny environment, then the body is going to absorb heat, either from radiation from the sun or from radiation from hot objects in the environment. So, for example, you might have walked over a very hot footpath and you can feel the heat from that footpath. Now, in a cold environment, clothes are going to reduce the amount of heat that is lost from the surface of the body. Now, in this situation, what we need to remember is that the amount of heat lost by radiation is a function of the surface temperature. So the higher the surface temperature, the more heat is lost by radiation. So if we're not wearing clothes, the surface of the body is relatively warm and a lot of heat will be lost. But if we are wearing clothes, then the surface of our clothes is much cooler than the surface of the body because the surface of the body is insulated by the air and by the clothes themselves. So the clothes are at a lower temperature than the surface of the body, therefore much less heat is lost from the surface of the clothes as radiation. That's another reason why clothes keep us warm. But again, in the hot environment, if there's a lot of radiation coming from the outside, for example, a very sunny environment, 
then instead of keeping us warm, clothes can